from KPRC Channel 2. This is Houston Newsmakers with Cambrell Marshall. It was a heartbreaking sight for the residents of Freedmanstown in the 4th Ward. A contractor tearing up part of the street, but not just any street. It was one constructed of bricks laid by former slaves and their descendants after gaining their freedom and starting new lives in Houston. The fight now continues by many in that community to preserve the bricks and the history of that section of Fourth Ward Houston. Joining me this morning is Doris Ellis Robinson, the co-founder of the Houston Sun newspaper and an activist with the Freedman's Town Preservation Coalition. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you here. That wasn't the first time that it happened. Well, it happened twice. Well, actually three times. It was the first time I put my body in the hole and stopped it. I remember that. Yeah. And so yeah. what's been in place now to try to keep that same kind of thing from happening again? Well, we've gone, you know, to court and uh, we've come back with the new mayor trying to find a resolution. And after the last break, uh, it, it just not only broke our heart, but I think it touched the mayor to the point mm -hmm. where he has put in place a uh, specific criteria when any person comes to do any work in Freedmanstown. He said the red lights are going to flash when you put in, in, the, in the town, in the streets, so that we can make sure it won't happen again. The Public Works Department uh, has received specific instructions as to how to handle it, and uh, persons who come in and do any damage uh, will be fine. For people who may not get it, what's the significance of those bricks, and why should everybody be concerned about them being maintained? We're trying to preserve the last vestiges of the work of the freedmen after slavery ended. They settled in Freedmanstown, and that's where it gets its name. And the bricks, I thought, were the iconic piece to let people know that this is where these folk who came out of slavery and decided to make a life for themselves. So the doctors, the lawyers, everybody who had a career of any sort uh, came out of Freedmanstown because that was the place where they uh, resided. And those bricks were handmade by the folks who were there. Were the bricks not? were handmade by them and they had to pay for the uh, roadway so that they could be laid and they went to city council for six years making that request and they continued to do that. And um, when the city council finally decided that they could place the bricks because it was malaria, it was a main health issue, uh, that they had to pay for them themselves and they paid from six hundred and twenty five dollars uh, per house frontage mm -hmm. to uh, to lay the bricks. There's so much going on around the Freedman's Town area. Gentrification is mm -hmm. going on, new buildings and things like that. Are you optimistic that going forward with all of the things that have been put into place that those bricks will remain undisturbed and you can kind of create the maintain the history of that area? That is our goal and I think under this mayor I think we can make it happen. He is uh, He's listened to what we've had to say, and we have educated the council people so that they could be sensitive to what the value of that location is. Mm -hmm. And I think we're going to get there. Uh, we're having a meeting Monday, and we're going to discuss it again. We were meeting last Monday. We've had lots of meetings, but it's worth it, so we're going to keep going. I think we're going to do it. I really do. And you have some things going on coming up next week, the um, uh, Black History Celebration going on, which is it's, it's in Emancipation Park area, but it's still an opportunity to get out and celebrate. Exactly, exactly. It is the African American History Parade, and it is the second annual parade, and we're going to do it not just to go in the street and have a good time. It's a historical educational showcase. So you need to find an African American who's done something significantly and showcase them in the parade and you may get an award. 713-443-9774 is a number to call and I tell people as well that you can also go to clicktohouston.com uh, on the newsmakers page on clicktohouston.com and get more information about that. So overall you're optimistic about keeping this together. I'm optimistic. I don't go into anything if I'm not optimistic. We've got to find a solution. And a tremendous amount has gone in Emancipation Park now. Oh, yeah, we, we've done it I, I just it's nine years. I've been working on it for, since 2007. Can you imagine? That's a long time. <laughs> yeah, but it's going to come. It's going to come. It, We're going to be open uh, Juneteenth. Okay, now that whole area there, you just got a, a, there's a big grant that came in as well. I have a few seconds to talk about that. That whole area is a whole different look than it was 10 years ago. Yes, and we expect it uh, from the urban planning that I had learned at Texas Southern University. Whenever you go in and create some something new in the area, uh, it will impact at least nine blocks each way. Mm -hmm. And so that's what is happening. And um, it's going to be good for the community. And, and one thing, people who may be concerned about the community, African Americans only own about, um, what, one third of the land in, in Third Ward. 
And uh, so most of that land was owned by someone else and that, that was rental property. Well, we're glad to see the progress. Thank you for coming in, thank Doris Ellis Robinson, and thank you for me. the hard work you've been able to thank do. Thank you, it's been a joy.